Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Jesus gives group truth on the subject of personal motivation for change, filmed on the 3rd of August 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. So how do you guys feel you've done this week? Honestly, what, what do you feel? Can Rob, can I have your comment? Uh, last night, this morning, I'm still feeling a lot of resistance within myself. Yep. Uh, to the truth. Yep. Um, and, yeah, I'm just starting to feel the sin of that resistance, actually. You know, yep. like, um, there's been a gift offered and I'm still pushing it away. Still pushing away. Yeah, yeah. it's not... Yeah. That's a sin, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, there's something probably uh, aligned with that is that the feeling that we still feel in the audience predominantly is resistance. So uh, uh, there's a dominant amount of resistance to truth still in the audience. And remember, really resistance goes all the way back to our first day. Our first day, remember the very first talk, do you really have a, a, a will-based desire to change? And at this stage, you know, there's quite a lot of you, we feel there is no really will-based desire to change. For many of you, the desire to change is driven by one or two very selfish motivations. One is that many of you have had a lot of personal pain in your life and you want that to change. You want there to be more personal happiness in your life rather than having personal pain in your life. So you could say that one of your primary desires at this point, so if we look at them, one of your primary desires is just to avoid personal pain. And the second thing we feel from you very strongly is a desire to make a relationship work. <laughs> like a, a desire to have a relationship. Many of you believe with your soulmate, you know, you want to attract, you think you want to attract your soulmate and have that relationship work. And the reality is, for many of you, you just want that relationship to feed most of your addictions. So the second reason is to get someone to feed your addictions. Now, of course, this doesn't apply to all of you. It applies to a fair number, though. When I say a fair number, over half are still in this place where you basically are here for reasons that have nothing to do with growth towards God and nothing to do with becoming more loving to other people or even more loving to yourselves actually because when you do both of these two things what most of you don't realize still is that when you do these things you're still being unloving to yourself in fact Avoidance of personal pain is one of the greatest ways of being unloving to yourself. Because while you avoid it, you're not feeling it, and while you're not feeling it, it won't release from you, and if it doesn't release from you, then it's going to increase. As you do more things that are unloving, the personal pain will increase, and no real change will take place. Now, the next talk I'm going to give is about forgiveness and repentance. But to be honest with you as a group, there is a good half of you or close to half of you that are not ready for that talk at all. And not only are you not ready, but you don't even want to know about it. There's a feeling in your soul of not wanting to know. And in fact, if we're honest with ourselves as presenters, there has been a strong feeling from this group that you haven't wanted to know a lot of things we've already shared with you. 
right, from a soul-based perspective. There are some of you who do want to know, and there's, some, and there's quite a number of you who don't want to know. So the question we've been asking ourselves is, is it loving for us to, to put you in an audience where we feel a very strong will-based desire to not know about certain things? Where we're, go where we're having to be almost force it down your throat, and even then you're not accepting it. Most of you argue. There's an internal argument with most of our assessments of your own condition. And whenever we've had a private discussion with many of you, you've always argued with our assessment of your own condition. And there's the will-based desire to argue about it. In other words, no strong will-based feeling of really wanting to know where I'm at, and particularly where I'm at on that map. There's a bit of ringing, Igor, if we can just down me a little or down somebody else who's ringing. Um, probably better if we down the audience mics a little or something so so what we're trying to work out what's the best way to inform you that this is a problem for each of for the ones for the people who are here that it is a problem for while at the same time still giving the program to the people who we feel want to actually respond to the program and, and actually work their way through things. Now, as we've mentioned to you, the last day is all about relationship, a desire for a relationship with God. And to be honest with you, we feel that there's only about 11 people here who actually have a desire for a relationship with God. And then there's probably another seven or eight people who we believe would benefit from the discussion about having a desire for a relationship with God, even though they personally have yet to really demonstrate that desire. So, so we'd be speaking to, around about it tomorrow, if we continue as we're going with this program, we'd be speaking to 78 people, who, of which only 18 or so really are anywhere near even developing a desire for a relationship with God. And the others feel quite strongly against the idea of a relationship with God, actually. Quite opposed to the concept of a relationship with God because most of you are still heavily in addictions and therefore trying to avoid a soul-based, real self relationship with God. And then today, um, the program we're, go we're going to offer you this afternoon is all about forgiveness and repentance. Now, forgiveness and repentance are principles of involving divine love, like there are principles involving uh, the, your relationship with God. And there are also principles re regarding do you really want to love? And what we've observed in quite a lot of you, not, not more than half in this case, but in quite a lot of you, is that there's not even a developed desire to love at this point. Because you've been, you've been so used to selfishly applying this material about divine truth uh, rather than thinking about this underlying education about becoming more loving people. And so there's not a strong developed desire in almost half of you to actually become a more loving person. And, that, and therefore... The, the afternoon's program this afternoon is not going to benefit you at all. What would benefit you, we feel, for those people is to use the next one and a half days of time to go back over the entire program you've already got and actually regurgitate it all and feel your resistance to most of that program. Does that make sense? So what we've decided to do and, and we feel in future we may do this more often, is we've decided to actually select the people we would like to see in the talks that follow. And what this session is all about is giving you an opportunity, a personal opportunity, to ask why we've made that selection, if you don't already know. Does that make sense? So what we're doing is we're giving you the opportunity to respond. Now, we, in this discussion, I am not going to play, put up with anger about your response. 
And in fact, if you, if you press your anger towards me or your frustration towards me, I'll say, well, I don't even want you now in the next session whether we, we had you before or not. Does that make sense? So what we need to do is you just need to own your feelings about what is going to happen now. Now, we feel quite strongly, and this is something that myself, Mary and Cornelius are becoming more sensitive to, in that we don't want to share truth with people who want to resist it. All we want to do is share pe truth with people who want to have it. And we do not feel that it's loving to ourselves or to you to try to force you to receive truth that, that you, in your soul, have not demonstrated you really want to receive. Does that make sense? We feel quite strongly that the, the more we try to share more information with you, when already many of you have demonstrated a large unwillingness to even look at the information up to this point, is an indication that your soul, you're not seeing your soul-based unwillingness. And you're willpowering yourself over everything, which is the opposite of what we want to encourage you to do. What we would like to do is highlight to you your soul-based unwillingness. Does that make sense? And in particular, your soul-based unwillingness to do the two things that we would like to talk about for the rest of the program. The first thing is a soul-based willingness to love, to actually love others even when they don't love you even when they don't care for you, even when they hate you, even when they do terrible things to you, still love them. Developing that kind of soul-based willingness to love others. And then also, tomorrow, of course, developing a soul-based willingness, desire and passion to enter this relationship with God. You see, what we've been trying to do up until today is give you a program that enables you to be, that enables you to begin deconstructing your blockages to your willingness to love and your and your and your willingness to actually enter a relationship with God because we know through our own personal experience that a relationship with God will aid you through many of these things that you're finding very tough up to now but unfortunately, many of you have no desire at all to involve God because you've just, you're just looking to get a lot of your things done through finding the ideal person, the ideal man or the ideal woman, and then just projecting all your demands and needs upon them rather than actually working sincerely through w yourself, your own baggage, and wanting in, in, through your relationship with God that allows you to attract the other half of yourself in a more loving manner. And to be honest with you, many of you, if you met your soulmates at this point, you would severely damage your relationship with them right? because of this attitude. And, and in some ways, we almost feel sorry for your soulmates in some ways. And for almost one half of you, your condition is worse than the average condition of humanity. In other words, you're in a more hellish condition than the average person on this planet. And we would like to assist you to observe this in your day-to-day -day life and also to develop a desire to address it. Mm -hmm. So many of you up until now have been attracted to the external truths of God. This is why you've been attracted to God's truth, to divine truth, because you've been attracted to the external truths. But when it comes to the internal things that are happening inside of yourself, for many, for as I say, almost half of you, there is no desire whatsoever to see anything that's really, really going on. You are focusing on your hurt rather than focusing on your unloving condition. And you have misinterpreted what I've been saying to you about your hurt. You have actually internalised and internally justified damaging other people further because you're hurt. So while I do acknowledge that many of you have been hurt emotionally, most, all of you of course, 
have been hurt emotionally. I do not agree with your choice to continue to ignore your own unloving behaviour in justifying hurting others. I don't, I can't condone your attitudes like this. And the problem with giving you, many of you, more information is you are just going to use that information selectively to damage more people rather than be, rather than be very uh, focused on your own desire or lack of it to love. So this is a very important factor. So what we're doing in our next session, which is about forgiveness and repentance, is we are going to ask those people who we feel firstly have a desire to actually love, that we can feel from you while you've been present in this audience. And we're going to ask you to stay if you'd like to stay. And we're also going to list a few people who we feel do not really have a strong desire or a strong developed desire to love at this point, to stay because we feel the information may benefit you. In other words, we feel there's enough self-reflection potentially for the information to benefit you. And, but we're going to ask the rest of you to not be involved in the rest of our program. Okay? And tomorrow, we're going to only ask the 17 or 18 people that we have selected that we feel, one, have a strongly developed or have a developing desire to have a relationship with God, or two, will benefit from the information even though they have not necessarily demonstrated that strong desire at this point. Does that make sense? That's what we're going to do. In a way, I'm sorry it's had to come to this. We've been working our butts off, uh, Mary, Courtney and I, in an attempt to try to help you break through some of this. But sometimes what we find is that we work far too hard. And what we need to do instead is just draw the line and say, this is where you're at. And even if you don't agree with us, I'm sorry, I'm sorry this is where we believe you're at. And, and while you're there, you will need to make some different choices before you can be at a different place where you are a lot easier to be with. Many of you are very difficult to be with because of the choices you make, which are all out of harmony with love, you know, it's all just about these few things. Now, one thing we don't want you to feel is all told off and punished and whatever else, because that's not our intention. Our intention is to have a good discussion with a group of people who we feel have a desire to love. Does that make sense? And then tomorrow our intention is have a discussion with a group of people whom we feel some desire for a relationship with God. And we feel if we focus our attention on those people over the next two days, that we'll have some very positive interactions that will be placed on the internet as well for anybody to see. And you, so everyone here will be able to see what they missed out on, but they'll also be able to feel about why they weren't involved in those discussions. If it turns out that you're not involved in those discussions. Does that make sense? And this might help you, or we're hoping it will help you, be a bit more self-reflective about where you're actually at. That sound all right with you? So um, our suggestion will be those who are not involved in the program up until now, there's two things that you can be involved in. One is you can continue to come along to the meals and, and so forth that are here and share in conversation with any, all of us. The second thing you can be involved in is if, if in the, after the, this program today you would like to have a photo, a group photo that you would like to have, then, you, then we're happy to invite you along to participate in the group photo. And that, but they're the only two things that we're going to invite you to come along to. And the people who we're inviting today are a different list of people than the people we're inviting tomorrow. And some of you are in both groups and some of you aren't. Mary. Could I just ask that uh, anyone who does decide to leave early, could you let me know or reception know because we'll just alter the meals? Yes, yeah. so if you do decide because you're not going to be involved in the program tomorrow, you do decide to leave early, which is your prerogative, 
then we would ask that you let, please let reception know so they don't prepare meals for you tomorrow or tonight if you decide you want to leave tonight, today. Our suggestion is you don't. Again, this is a great opportunity for even for those people who are not involved in the program from now on. It's a great opportunity for you to be really self-reflective about the material and also to discuss at, at the evening meals some of the things you didn't, weren't aware of at the time. Does that make sense? So that's our suggestion to you.